On the Wado Radio Show. Of course, it's DJ Wado. It's the Wado Radio Show. It's more than music. It's ministry, man. We have a very special guest. This dude is not just a friend of the show, but he's just one of my friends, man. And uh, he used to go by R. Swift, but he dropped the R. And he's just Swift now, man. Swift, what's up, bro? What's happening? What's good, man? You know I had to get that little R. Swift in there, though, right? Yeah, I know, man. I know. It had to come off. It had to come off, y'all. I feel it, man. How you been, though, man? I'm good. I'm great. I'm feeling amazing. I'm 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 feeling really good about everything right now. That's that's what's up, man. Um, so I take it this this album is one of the things that you feeling real good about, man. Higher learning. Ha, <laughs> man. Listen. Higher learning, I'm feeling so good about higher learning. It's amazing, right? It's definitely one of the reasons why I'm feeling this good. Sure. Um, let me. I, I guess, man. Let me. Let me start here, man. Just as a, as a. R. Swift fan, you know, you was definitely, um, you know, one of the guys when I first started listening to this music that I got into hard body, you know, yourself, Jay Johnson, uh, he was Jay Silas back then, like just love jaw. And, um, man, what, what, um, what took you so long to cook this up, man? Uh, what took me so long to cook this up, man? I was going through life. Really? I was going through life, man. Um, as many people know, uh, Apply Pressure came out in 2013. And right after the album came out, my wife got diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. So um, what happened was I had to cancel all my shows and promo tours and stuff I had lined up. Mm. I had to cancel all that. And I stopped traveling for like a good year and a half, two years, because I stayed home and took care of my wife. Um, she couldn't care for herself at the time. Wow. And so like, I, I, I was just home taking care of her, taking care of the family, you know, doing what I had to do, being that stand-up guy. And um, I, I had to stop traveling, man. I had to put an end to it. And just trust that the Lord was going to let me bounce back if it was in his will, eventually. So while, while I was home with, with Wifey um, over that course of time, uh you know, it just had reached back out, and um, I worked out a situation and signed over with Exist. Um, and, you know, the, the plan was to jump right in the album mode. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you're signed now, you got to jump in the album mode. Sure. And so, um, you know, when I signed, and they was like, oh, you ready to work on the album? I'm like, heck yeah, I'm like, let's do it. And, um, yeah, I ran into a brick wall and didn't get my album done until, like, a year and change later. So uh, <laughs> um, it, it took a while because I think it took a while for me to get back into the swing of just being an artist. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I had gotten, you know, while I was home with my wife, I had just gotten into, you know, caretaker, provider, like, this is what I have to do. And it kind of took a while for me to get out of that mindset and into, yo, artist MC. You know, I just wasn't feeling real artist-like. And uh, I had to fight through uh, a lot of things um, to, to get to the point where I finished this album. And, uh, so it definitely took longer than expected and longer than desired. But, you know, I'm glad we got it done. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this project. Um, I love it. It's my favorite project that I've ever done. Really? Yeah, and it's like that's a statement. But but hold up though, hold 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 up. That is a statement, brother. It is. You 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 serious with that? I think I I mean a lot of a lot of people say that, but that's like, bro, that's a statement, man. It is, and I think this is like. I think this is like my my tenth album, my ninth or tenth yeah. album, something like that. Yeah. And, and so, but I feel like you don't understand, man. Like I feel the most refreshed. I feel the most energized. I feel the most focused that I've ever felt. You know what I mean? Like, and I think going through this album, you know, I struggled a lot in the beginning. I struggled a lot, like, yo. Do the people even want to hear from me still? Mm. Like, 
Um, like, man, do I, like, I, I kind of went through a little insecure moment where I was like, man, like, you know, I'm, I'm just not as young and fresh as everybody else. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't got the youthful bones anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I'm an old man. And, um, and so as I was putting this album together, it, you know, it was kind of like, I kind of rebirthed. Something popped off of me like, yo, do you know who you are? You Swiss, homie. Like, what? <laughs> and then, it was kind of like, and, and, and you know, one thing, I sat down and I compiled the list in my mind of everything that everybody else could offer. Like, Yo, somebody can offer you more swag. Somebody can probably offer you better lyrics than me. I don't know who because, you know, I'm the best, but, like, there's somebody. <laughs> no, nah, I was like, somebody can give you better lyrics than me. Somebody can probably give you a better marketing rollout strategy than me. And I had to ask myself, what could, name one thing that I can bring to the table that nobody else can bring. And I thought about it. And the answer was me. Mm. There is a billion and one rappers in the world. There's only one Swift. There's only one me Swift. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no other rapper on the planet can give the audience me. And that's what gave me the confidence, the drive to say, yo, you're saying stuff that only you could say because nobody else is you. Right. Use it to your advantage. <laughs> so, like, I, I just, man, I, I you know, I know, it, you know, most people are going to, like, kind of look at me crooked after this, but, like, I fell in love with me all over again. Because, you know, in, in, in the hip-hop genre, it's all about keeping up with the Joneses. Yo, know, they doing this, we need to do this. Or they moving like this, we should move like that. You know what I mean? So it's always comparing yourself to other people. Sure. And so, like, I had to fall in love with me all over again and say, you offer something special and unique that nobody else on this planet can offer. And that gives you the advantage to do what you do. Mm. And man, it was all lit after that. <laughs> it was all lit after that. Sure. I was like, yeah, this is mine. Even if I sell 1,000 copies, and that's it. Like, at the end of the day, I'm proud because I put my best work forward. You see what I'm saying? I was open. I was honest. I was transparent. Like, I gave you me. And if I can walk away giving you all that I have, I'm completely satisfied. Sure. And that's what I did. I gave the people me on this record. And, uh, yeah, I'm happy about it. I'm ecstatic about it. You know what I mean? And the responses did love me. So, yeah, man. I um I remember you kind of announcing the name change around the time that you signed with Exist, but I never really heard you talk about why you drop, why you dropped the R, man. <laughs> I always wondered about okay. that because I'm like, I mean, the R, this your real name is Rodney. It is, but that's not where the R came from in R Swift. Okay, well, school me, brother. The R came. The R K see the see it's so corny because it's so old. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> when, I, when I was young and I was you know, I was like eleven years old in this game, like you know what I mean? I, I was doing my thing, I thought I was gonna be like the next whoever. And, MOP? Um, was it M O P back then? Nah man, nah. Before see, MOP? See, I'm, from Long, I'm from Long Island. Oh, you was trying to be E P M D. I was trying to be, no, I, yo, I was trying to be like Keith Murray. Okay. Like Keith Murray was my guy. Keith Murray was so that like, guy, though. Yeah, and like, he actually grew up around the corner from my house. Wow, okay. You know what I mean? So, um, what happened was, 
I was in New York with my cousins, and, you know, we was, you know, in the cypher or whatever. And, like, at the time, I you, I wasn't, you know, really concerned about rapping good. I was more concerned about, like, trying to rap bad. Sure. And so, like, my cousins was like, yo, we're going to start calling you Swift because you always quit to jump in the cypher and give it. And then I was like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, R Swift because you represent Swiftly. And I was like, what? Represent. Yeah. <laughs> Represent. Yeah. And so, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, Represent Swift? Hold, hold on. I'm going to do something real ghetto right now. I'm going to do something. Hey, hey, y'all stop fighting. Stop fighting over the daggone toys. Give it to me. Nobody plays with it. I know. Give it to me. Now go. You see, hey, you had you had to represent it. swiftly as a father right there, though. <laughs> you got to, you know, I'm domesticated. I'm domesticated. Go in the room, close the door. You see what I'm doing over here. Go in the room, close the door, and pray. <laughs> pray. Read Romans and be able to recite it. <laughs> yeah. How's that for spiritual fatherhood? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. You all had the realest interviews ever. Oh, my God. That boy said, go in the room and pray. <laughs> go now. But, uh, yeah, man. So, you know, uh, yeah, he gave me my name, R. Swift. And, you know, just as a as an older man, uh, a friend of mine, I'm not going to put his name out there, but a friend of mine a couple of years ago was like, yo, R. Swift sounds so old school. And I was like, you know what? It does. And, you know, they was like, yo, you need to come back. You need to reinvent yourself. And, you know, new name, new everything. And I was like, yeah. I'm just calling myself Swift instead of R. Swift. Because everybody just calls me Swift anyway. True. And that's what happened. Yeah. That's what happened. I changed the name. And I, I'm not going to put this other person's name out there so he can't get no credit. <laughs> <laughs> Represent swiftly. I love it though. I'm so <laughs> mad I never knew that though. Yeah, it was so because I like it was so corny. Man, I thought it was tight as a young boy, but it was like, tight back then. De- yeah, it, that's what I'm saying. Like New York, you know, nineties. Represent. Represent you know was saying? the thing, bro. Yeah, but as a grown man, you can't tell people that you're <laughs> You can't tell people that your name stands for represent Swift. <laughs> Bro, I always, I always honestly I always assumed it was it was Rodney something. That's what I always assumed. No, no. I would cause I didn't like I grew up hating my name. So I wouldn't want nobody to know my government name. Like even now I low key like I don't like it when people call me Rodney. Like I just can't stand it. So People call me Swift, man. Man, but, uh, Swift, you, you learn know. something new every day, brother. You so do, man. <laughs> you do, you do. But you know, there was a reason why there was a reason why I didn't like my my, my government, man. And that's because you know I had a I had a problem with my father, and so I didn't want mm. to be reminded that I was his son sure. all the time. Sure. So you know, I hid behind the nickname. So I wouldn't have to face the music. But now, you know, me and my father, we good. Like, we real good. I love my dad. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, you know, we all squashed everything. And my pop, he's, he's my hero. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I, st- I still don't like the name Rodney that much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that ain't got nothing to do with him now. But, sure. uh, yeah. So, man, this, um, this album, Higher Learning, man, just, just for people that haven't heard it yet, they haven't had a chance to, you know, get it on iTunes or stream it or whatever. Um, man, well, just mm-hmm. just explain this concept behind it, bro. Because you always... Yeah, I, one, one thing I can say before you drop this. One thing I can say. Your albums always have some type of meaning with them, bro. They do. They do. And um, this one was really no different. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, more so, like, the... Uh, of course, High and Learning is a name of a popular movie. Right. Um, uh, and so, like, 
number one, I wanted the album to to make people feel the way the movie made me feel. So sure. it was more so a feeling of yo when I and when I finished um, watching High and learning the movie, my my thought was yo this movie was dope. But it also made me really think about some stuff. Mm. Like, like, dang, yo, maybe this, there's a war going on that we're not really aware of. Sure. Like, dang, this, this put me on the game. And so, like, I wanted people to feel that same way when they were finished listening to my album. Like, yeah, I was entertained, but dang, this album really did put me up on some game a little bit. And so, like, um, and... You know, the the other meaning is everything in life that we learn, you know, we all have a, a idea of, like, something like love. We have an idea of what love is. But what if we can learn about love on a larger level than what we already thinking about it? Or we have an idea of forgiveness, but what if we talked about forgiveness on another level? So mm. it's almost like I want to talk about things about life, but in a way that challenge people to up their thought about it. You know what I mean? Like, so, um, when, you know, we talk about forgiveness and, you know, uh, when it's, when we talk about forgiveness, it's always us forgiving somebody for doing us wrong. Right. Um, but I want to do a song about forgiveness where I was the one asking for forgiveness. Like, well, let's talk about, you know, needing to be forgiven. You know what I mean? So, I just, you know, I just wanted to have fun with a couple of different things and really challenge people's thinking on everyday life. And so I felt like I accomplished what I set out to accomplish. Stop. Man, that's good, bro. That's real good. Um, what, what, what life experiences, man, do you think kind of made you go in this direction for your album, bro? Um... I think, like, you know, when I look at my time and when Wait, I look I at my time in hip hop and I look at my right, career, close the door. Um, I don't know how much longer I have. You know what I mean? Um, and I grew up in hip hop, so I was the young gunner, fresh in doing this thing, and now I feel like my roles have changed as I've gotten older. You the OG. And so, you know. Yeah, you know, people look at me like, oh, man, you the vet. You know, you the OG. You the, you know, you a trailblazer. You a this, you a that. And I'm sitting there like, whether I want to admit or not, or whether I want to accept or not, like, my roles have changed. Yeah. And being as though my roles have changed, I think my presentation has to reflect that. And so, like... <clears throat> I wanted to do an album as an elder state. Like, yo, like, I'm not brand new in this thing. So I'm not I'm not out there trying to keep up with the young bucks. I'm like, nah, I am the OG. So here's what I gotta say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like and so I think that when people call you the OG, you can look at it one or two ways. You can look at it as, yo, they call me they call me you old. Mm. Or you can look at it like no, they're giving you reference. So when you say something, it means more than just what a peer would say. So, you know, if you go to your OG to get put on some game, you won't listen to your OG. Because your OG got more to offer you than somebody who just got in with you. Right. And so, like, I, I decided to take that as a badge of honor. Like, okay, well, if I'm the OG, then let me take this position seriously and put y'all on to some game. And so that's 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 what I did on this album. I felt like, yo, let me let me reflect my time here and, and and give it to him from this perspective. So, you know, that's kind of what what made me go in this direction is just embracing and embracing my experiences, man, embracing my time and you know, actually feeling like I had something to offer. That's, That's good. more than just, you know, rhymes and beats. Like, sure. you know, embracing the fact that you can offer something to people. Sure. And, yeah, so that's what it was. That's deep, bro. Um, How is your wife doing in this season, man? 
man, let me tell you, wifey's doing great. You know what I mean? We are we up in that cancer free life. Nice. Wifey's cancer free. You know what I'm saying? She loving it. She right. She looking right. Yes, Lord. You know what I mean? Like everything's gravy, man. Wifey's real good. Her health is amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like God really did look out. You know what I mean? She bounced back stronger than ever, and I love that. You know what I'm saying? Man, Swift, you you've um. You've been through so much stuff, bro. Um, mm-hmm. Like I even, I even think about your son. You know, mm-hmm. your wife. Like all, all of these things, man. Like, um, and people, you know, people go through difficult, difficult times, difficult seasons, man. Like, what, what, what has, what has allowed you to remain consistent and to keep persevering throughout all these different setbacks that you've that you've had, man? Um, man, it's, it's, it's really the Lord. Like, there's, there's no fancy answer. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's any right answer outside of the grace of God. You know what I mean? Um, that's just, you know, just knowing that my life doesn't belong to me, man. Like, this life can get flipped upside down, but at the end of the day, like, I trust God to keep us. And, um, and it, it, it just like, you know, like they say, man, he'll never put more on us than we can bear. And so I keep that in mind. And I keep in mind that God doesn't get pleasure out of kicking my life around in the dirt. <laughs> and so, like, if God allows something to happen in my life, it's because he has a purpose for that happening. Um, God doesn't get joy out of my misery. You see what I'm saying? And so <clears throat> I had to I had to look at it that way and just know that there's a purpose in it somewhere. And uh that's it, man. Keep my head low and, and keep praying. And, and and God brought us out every single time. And now, you know, the next trial that I go into, yeah, I'm sure it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna hurt, it's gonna be painful. But I also have uh I also have a truth that I look at, and that is we haven't went through any trial that God hasn't brought us through. Like, no trial yet has destroyed us. And so, like, I trust God to be faithful in bringing us through every trial we enter. So uh, that's my mindset, you know what I mean? Like, keep focused, stay grinding, because this this is going to pass. This ain't going to last forever. And uh, that's the mindset that we... We've adopted, you know what I mean? Yo, were there times you wanted to give up? Absolutely. You don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not Superman, you know what I mean? Like, I definitely wanted to give up, um, especially uh, <clears throat> with wifey having cancer and all that, like, and having to stop, stop traveling. Uh, but, you know, I wanted to give up music and not do music anymore. Um but realistically, the thing that stopped me from doing music, I mean, that wouldn't let me quit music, was what else are you going to do? <laughs> like, I have a criminal record, so I can't get no nine to five. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? My, they, they look at my criminal record, they're like, no way. So they, want, they, they won't let me work around people like that. So that stops me in that area. But also, you know, I've been doing music full-time as a career for, like, what, 12, 13 years? And I'm like, I haven't worked a job in 13 years. What am I going to do? It's <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Work at the grocery store? You know what I'm saying? It's like, so it was really like, this makes the most sense. You might as well stay put and fight through this season and live to rap another day. You know what I mean? So that that's what it was that kept me doing music was because I can't say, oh, it's ministry that kept me doing music because at the end of the day, I can, I can bag bags at Kroger and still do ministry at Kroger. You know what I mean? Like, I can evangelize the people on my job. I can... I give the gospel to my neighbors, so nothing stops ministry, but you don't always have to do music. 
Well, for me, right now, the only lucrative career I have is music. And I'm working on some other things, you know, to kick in the hot again after I'm done with music. But I'm not necessarily done with music yet. You know, I'm going to get on their nerves for a little while longer. For a little bit longer, and right? I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll let y'all have it after I'm done. I'm almost done with it. Trust me. I'm very close to being done with it. And y'all can have it all back. You'll never have to hear my voice again. Yo, could we get a a, a third car- incarnation of the Rhyme Council? See, why does it have to be a third incarnation? Let me say so you're basically saying I failed at it twice. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I didn't. I didn't fail. Hallelujah. I, I didn't fail. That's not what I said, no. though. No, I know. I know. Um, let me tell you something. Blind Council is a vision. Uh, it's bigger than a label to me. Blind Council is a vision that I feel like God is giving me. And I don't think that I would uh, be allowed to rest easy until that vision comes to pass. <clears throat> We've come close a couple of times, but I don't think the idea of line council is finished by far. So there will be a line council and Everything, every person that you've seen rock with me with Ron Council so far, they're not gone forever. There's some conversations happening behind the scenes to put something together. Um, you know, Ron Council was on the highways, um, you know, when that Apply Pressure album dropped. And, you know, after my wife had gotten sick, I had to put an end to Ron Council because I could no longer afford to fund the whole label on my own. Sure. And it was really a funding thing that made me kind of pull the plug on Ron Council. But like I said, there are some things in the works and Ron Council will live. We will live. That's yeah, I mean, all I can say at the moment. Man, that's it. We so, will win. So I feel like I need to throw out some hypotheticals here. I mean, I'm just saying we're letting people have their turn. Because I like if you look back on the Rhyme Council, that was Young Josh, that was Epistle, yeah, that was activist, activist, yeah, that, that was that was seen, that was. Swift, that was the young tragic hero. I was going to say, was he was he an official rhyme council? Tragic. Yes, he was. Wow. Yes, he was. And so, what I'm saying is, do you understand the thunder that we had within our possession? Yeah. And you know, I, I'll put it to you like this. If that group would have stayed tight knit, there wouldn't be any room for other groups to happen. And I think wow. that Ron Swift, that's Council, a that's a statement right there. It is, but I, anybody who knows knows, and, and I stand by that. So if Ryan Council didn't sacrifice themselves then some of these other super groups would have never happened because I can guarantee you we would have had a monopoly on that situation, which means, you no, you don't move because they got this. Yeah, we would have been too much. It, it, it just would have been a monopoly on the game, and some of the classic group albums that we had a pleasure of having over the past couple of years, we wouldn't have had those albums. Because it wouldn't have made sense to try to do it as long as Ron Council was there. So I think for a minute we had to lay it down. But it shall get picked back up. Wow. Believe me when I tell you. Man, I miss Ron I, Council isn't through. Yo, I, I you know, so <clears throat> I, 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 let me let me state this. 
I definitely miss you and Young Josh doing music together. Man, man, man. What what needs to take I place for that for that for 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 that to happen? I again? do have to break up the golden era. And first of all, let me not before we talk about Young Josh because we are going to talk about that. Yeah. Let me not uh, minimize the impact of Ryan Council 2.0. Sure. Okay? But we had Rails. Big Phil. We Fro Wonder. Big Phil. Like, come on now. And you know who almost got it? We almost, I believe we almost had him. We was really talking to him. We almost had him. And in hindsight, he, he should have ran with him. Who? We almost had Cambino. Wow. If we would have got Cambino, woo yeah. You know? <laughs> Lord Jesus is a fire. Right? <laughs> we got you something. Yeah, we was, we, again, we would have posed a threat to groups. It just wouldn't have been able to happen. But, you know, we, you know, once again, we sacrificed. We laid down. It's okay. But, um, yeah, that was that. But Josh, back to Josh. What, like, Josh is my heart, man. That dude is always going to be my heart and soul. Like, that dude right there is, man, that's my boy. Love that brother. Um, will you ever hear music from Swift and Josh again? Probably not. See, you know what I mean? Probably not. Like, I don't, I don't think, I don't really know if Josh is really still doing music like that. Like, you know what I mean? He's, uh, he's married. He's got a beautiful daughter. You know what I mean? He's, uh, I think he got a dope job out there. So, um, I don't know. I don't know if he's still, like, in the music like that. So, I don't know if that's a realistic thing. But, uh, yeah, me and Josh, we did some work. We did some work to these people. Man, you know what, though? It, and it wasn't even just y'all did some work just on the on the music end. Y'all was, like was like a real team, bro. It was like, yeah. it was like a period of time I did not see you without seeing him. Yes, yes, those were, we had a special. Y'all was like Kobe and Shaq. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, me and Josh, me and Josh had a real special connection, man. Um, we had a special brotherhood that I don't think I would ever share with anybody else. Um, it was just different, man. It was real different. And uh, I miss that brother, you know what I mean? We're not as. We're not as close as we used to be. Um, I guess things happen. You know what I mean? Like, don't really know what happened, but like, we're just we're just not close like that anymore. Um, but we had that. We we had a special moment in history, man. Like that dude was like, he was he was closer than a blood brother. You know what I mean? And. Uh, I'll never, I like, I wouldn't take that back for nothing. So, you know, I enjoyed our time, man. Like, that's my dude. If I could do some music with him, absolutely. I would do it in a heartbeat. But, um, yeah, I just don't know where he's at musically. You know what I mean? So. That's real, We'll brother. see. I know, he, I know he did something recently with, uh, uh, well, not recently, but. He did something with T. Walla. They did like the uh, the Elsewhere album. You know what I'm saying? Like I know they did that joint. Um, I thought I heard he was working on something new, um, but I don't know. I haven't heard anything. Yo, let me let me ask you this, man. Um, yeah. Because you know you've been you've been around the music scene in general for a while, and obviously also mm -hmm. Christian rap man. And you know one of the things that I see happen to a lot of people 
is people get burned out from this thing, man. Mm-hmm. You know, why do you why do you think that is, man? Um I don't know. I think it's different for everybody. Like I think people get burned out because they they come in with a dream. Mm. You know, these rappers, they start rapping and they'll look at Lecrae or they'll look at, you know, Andy or somebody that's successful and they'll come in and say, yo, I want to do that. And I think everybody comes in the, the game with a dream of being successful, whatever that dream looks like. You know what I mean? And so when it doesn't happen, I think people get worn out. They, they, they get tired of chasing it. And when it doesn't happen, I think they give up. You know what I mean? Like, you try and you try and you try so hard to to make a dent in the game. And when it doesn't happen, you kind of get worn out. And then, like, reality hits you. You know, especially for some of these artists that might be married. Yep. Like, you mess around and, you know, you have your wife and next thing you know, like, you ain't getting the bills paid. Like, I'm going to tell you what most Christian hip-hop is. And I'm going to just be a thousand percent out with you. You know what I mean? And that is, most Christian hip-hop, I say at least a good 80 to 90% of Christian hip-hop is this. A man who says he's full-time, you spend all day at home, while your wife is out working 40 hours a week. Mm. Your wife is stressed out. She paying all the bills. You not making no money, but you're spending her money going to Flavor Fest and all these <laughs> other events, and you ain't bringing nothing home. Right. And when you come home, and she all worn out, so, you know, it creates issues within the home. And then at the same time, she's looking at you funny because it's like, you're supposed to be the provider. Why am I provide? Right. And so you get a lot of these arguments with wives <laughs> that are like, yo, I'm like, I'm tired of you trying to live this dream, but you got responsibility. And so a lot of these rappers wind up having to quit because it's not lucrative for them. <laughs> but that's the reality of the industry is that it's going to take a while before it becomes lucrative for you like that. And so, like, either you need to, you know, plan your, your, your pursuit out a little differently or your wife is going to have, your, your family is going to have to be willing to ride it down with you through this. But it is hard. It's, it, it's heavy when you have a family and you're trying to do Christian rap. And you think you're going to make a, a, a good salary on performing in front of youth groups? Uh, nah. So I think, I think a lot of people get burnt out about that, you know what I'm saying, financially. And it's just hard to catch a break. Like, you don't have any real record labels in Christian hip-hop that are doing anything. Yeah, you I think, you know, so, I think I think part of the problem, too, is, like, Everybody thinks they got to be full time, and there's nothing wrong with doing this Absolutely. on the side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like nothing wrong, <laughs> nothing wrong. I mean, but like, cause no matter what industry you are, in, man, there is a glory. There's a glory that comes with it. You know what I mean? So with Christian hip hop, like, there's a glory that comes with being the full time guy. You know what I mean? Like, yo, I, I do music full time. The way people respond to that, like, oh, that's dope. There's a glory that comes with that. Sure. And I think that people, I think people want that glory. They want that. They want to be able to say, yo, this is all I do, yo. But, I mean, that's not realistic for a lot of people. For most people. Yeah, for most people. And so, like, I've been blessed to be able to still be doing this full time. You know what I mean? There's a couple times I'm like, yo, I wish... <laughs> like, there's a couple times I was like, yo, I wish I would have stayed in college and got a real career. Yeah. <laughs> this kicks rocks. But, you know what I mean? But I, I've been blessed to still be around. 
and to still be a voice. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's hard when you're trying to, you know, get into the game and kind of grow your feet in it. When I got into it, Christian hip hop was mad small. So everybody was famous. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everybody was known because yep. it was so small. And like now, there's so many people doing it, it's hard to really get your foot in the door. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's a, it, 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 there's a lot of reasons why people burn out. Yeah, that's good. Uh, though. Yeah, that was that was that's good insight, man. I hope I, I I might have to chop this snippet and just put this out for artists. Just that little piece right there, man. Just some real mm-hmm. talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's well, man. Some real talk, bro. Hey, Swift, man. Um, what's 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 coming up next for you, man? Just in terms of, um, I I know you're trying to tour a little bit to promote the record and all of that, man, but 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 what you got coming down the pike, man? Okay, so here's what's coming down the pike. Oh, man, you said this like you had a list ready, brother. <laughs> oh, trust me. There's a list. I'm going to tell you this. For anybody who thought Swift didn't drop enough content on the game frequently enough, just understand that has come to an end. Mm. Uh Oh, yes. Higher Learning is out right now. Yep. There's going to be something else of a huge proportions that's coming out within the next three months. Okay. Is this another, is this another album? Else. This is a mixtape? This is an EP? I'm not, I'm not saying stuff because I have situations that don't allow me to speak that freely, if you understand what I mean. Okay. So after this, there's something else major that's happening. And, yeah, I'm going to give people a lot more swift than they want this year and next year. This is, this is part of my retirement plan part of my retirement plan. I'm giving you everything. So trust me, I have a lot coming down the pipe. I'm, I'm in conversations with some people about, you know, some tours and stuff like that that I'm trying to get on. I'm trying to hustle. So wherever there's a stage, I'm there. Let me do it. So definitely touring. Uh, got my hands in a couple of, you know, and some TV shows and stuff like that. It's different levels of things. You know what I mean? I, it, you, you know, oh, God, I wish I could say some of this stuff. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot coming down the pipe. So I'm excited. For well, for well. Man, I feel that, bro. Well, Swift, man, um, I just want to tell you, man, I, I really uh, appreciate you, man. Appreciate your heart. Um, you know, just I, I just love you as a brother, man, and uh, it's always good to get it in with you, homie. Man, love you too, fam. Appreciate you the same, and uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad that you you still killing it. You doing your thing successfully, man. Like it's an encouragement to see you continue to do your thing, man. I love you more than life, my brother, and uh, yeah, man. Looking forward to some great things coming. Man, thank you, bro. On the way to radio show On the way to radio On the way to radio show Where it's much more music It's ministry